This is the greatest hour to follow Jesus. I do feel the Lord here. This is wonderful. Can we just lift our hands to heaven? I just want you to just close your eyes and forget about everything. A wonderful woman of God once said, we praise until we worship, and we worship until His glory comes, and then we just stand in the glory. His glory is Him. So I just want you right now just to begin audibly thanking the Lord. Out loud. That must, might be new for some of you. I just want you to go down this list in your heart that the Holy Spirit is giving you right now. Out loud. That means I should be able to hear you. Thank Him for the cross and, and the blood and, and His presence. Thank Him for His mercy. Come on, I don't have to do it for you. Just begin to thank the Lord. I want you to take about a minute just thanking Him. Jesus, we thank you tonight. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. You know, maybe you're there. You're like, I, I don't feel like thanking Him. Well, thank Him until you feel like it. Just begin. Th just trust me. You're going to have to trust me here. This is the front door. This is the way in. Thanksgiving. If, if, if we're not thankful, we're just spectators. The Bible says that we enter His gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. If you're not thankful, that's okay. Let me tell you what He did for you. He came to earth, left heaven's throne, traded heaven's diadem for a crown of thorns, traded heaven's robe for a robe of mockery, was stripped naked, beaten, flayed, skinned alive, beard ripped off his face, disfigured more than any human in history, hung on a tree at the busiest intersection in the entire region. Man would not mourn him, so the, the, the sky grew dark and rocks wouldn't thank him. I'm sorry, people wouldn't thank him, so rocks exploded before him. The Bible says he gave up his spirit when it was finished and descended into the earth, took captivity captive, embarrassed the devil, disrobed him took the keys from him, shot out of the grave, shot out of the grave three days later. The saints of old resurrected with him. They roamed the holy city of Jerusalem for 40 days along with him. And the Bible says 40 days later, he pierced the heavens like a glorified Holy Ghost living rocket, broke the stratosphere. The Bible said, as he who ascended, did he not descend so that he might ascend and fill all things and that he ascended above the highest heavens to fill everything with himself the Bible says and now he is seated at the right hand of the Father which is the reason which is the reason Jesus said we would see greater works not because we're better but because he is seated at the right hand of the Father and sent his Holy Spirit to live in you and the fountain never moves. That means if you work at In-N-Out and you flip burgers, you can have as much of Jesus as I can right here. You feel the Lord here? Listen to me right now. God did not change you. He replaced you. We're not worshiping Him in hopes that He'll come. We worship Him tonight because He's here. We worship a, a present Jesus tonight. He's really, really here. And check this out. He took you when you came to Him in faith, nailed you to a tree. And you gave Him you, and He gave you Him. And your body, your body, your body, your actual body, go like this. Say, this is the house of the Lord. That's what Paul said. Paul said, do you not know that you, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> so now I think you've got a little something to be thankful for. I want you to lift a praise. Listen, wait, hold on before you do. Listen to me. Praise is not for those who feel like it. 
Praise changes your feelings. Are you hearing me? Praise will change your mindset. Praise will run the devil out of your life and out of a building and invite, invite, hear, hear me, hear me, invite King Jesus to reign in that moment. That's what the Bible says, that he is enthroned on and in the praises of his people. What does that mean? That means that there's a lot of stuff here tonight that he didn't give you. A lot of stuff. We all have it. There's stuff in our life that God didn't give us. Sickness doesn't come from Jesus. It's still, I'm not saying you have a demon, but the origin of every sickness is from hell. It is not from heaven. You say, well, it's because we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world because of the great deceiver who deceived God's children. Your depression is not from the Lord. Your fear is not from the Lord. All of that stuff is not from the Lord. So here's what happens. Here's what happens. When you praise the Lord, Jesus comes into the moment and sits on a throne and puts that thing under his foot and crushes it. Now hear me. Hear me. I felt, I felt, Pastor, that, that, uh, that there'd be a great deposit here tonight. I felt that in the back, just talking to you. I think the Lord had us talking about what we were talking about for a reason. Because, you know, when you share testimony, it brings you straight back into that moment. Because the things of God never die. I'll, I'll get into that later. But what God has done is always available. You see, my testimonies in my life, they could, they do two things to you. If, if our mind is not renewed, it would just make you jealous. If our mind is renewed and we, and we gathered that, that every testimony is an invitation, that means that you can have the same thing. You can have the same thing. So as you praise the Lord tonight, King Jesus comes and manifests himself, not in every area of your life only, but literally in this building. In this building. He'll walk up and down every single aisle and touch every heart and every life. Wayward children, they'll come home when Jesus comes. Now here's what I want you to do. If it's going to get sloshy and messy in here, I want to start now. Now, just I'm paving, God's paving the way here. He's, I can sense it. He's chipping away at some stuff. Listen to me. You say I'm about balance. Well, uh, it's important you let God determine the balance. It's really important. It's important you let the Bible determine what balance is. This is really very important. That means Jesus has the right to set the terms of this entire meeting. Because it's not our meeting. So none of us shed our blood for this meeting, right? except for maybe some of the volunteers. <laughs> this is the Lord's meeting. So the Lord has the right to say, this is what I want. You say, I, I'm going to stick with the Bible. Dude, you ought to try reading it because it's got some wild stuff in there. What am I saying? All I'm asking you to do is this. Just give up right now. You say, well, I, I just don't want to be deceived. That's where deception begins. There's no need to fear. Jesus is faithful. The one who saved you keeps you saved. And he's the same one who will present you before the throne blameless. Trust him tonight, okay? Trust him. Now here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. Amen. <laughs> here's what I want you to do. I want you in the most undignified, just like King David, his wife got mad at him. Wives, leave your husbands alone right now. Let them turn into the man you always wanted them to be. I want you to lift a praise that is so undignified. If you have to clap, scream, jump, whatever you need to do, I want you to yield your body when I say three. And I want us to lift an intentional shout to the Lord. Donovan, you're going to fill this whole room with that thing. And we're going to give Jesus praise, okay? One, two, three. One, Jesus, we give you glory. Hallelujah. 
Come on. Jesus, we give you glory. Jesus, we give you glory. We give you glory and honor and power and praise and majesty. And majesty and dominion and might and strength belongs to you tonight, Jesus. Belongs to you tonight. We give you glory. Jesus. Jesus. I want you to say his name all over this place. Jesus. 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 Jesus, I give you praise. Jesus, I give you glory. Glory and honor. Glory and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tim, would you come up? Hallelujah. Lord, do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. We give you praise. There's nobody like you. Nobody like you. Just every eye closed, every hand lifted. I just want to love on Jesus here for a second. worship you. Oh, my soul. I'll help you. Take joy. My king in what you hear. And let it be Beautiful. Come on, guys. Lift it. Come on, Tim. I love you, Lord. Fentiel, Fentiel. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. I love 
Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be, let it be a sweet, sweet. Oh, let it be, let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ears there is none like. touch my heart like you do and I could search for all eternity Lord and find that there is none like you there is none like you oh no one else can touch my heart like you do and I could search for all eternity Lord and find that there is none like you yeah Lord we give you praise nobody nobody like you we give you praise Nobody, nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you. Just forget about everything now and worship the Lord. Nobody like you, Jesus. Forget about everything. Everyone, everything. Song to the Lord tonight. Just a little more. Come on, don't get in a hurry. Just worship Him. Holy Spirit, I welcome you here. I welcome you here. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Move and flow. He's right here, he's right here, he's right here. He's right here.
His presence is home. We're home now. This is where we belong. Pick up those keys just a little, Donovan. Holy Spirit, you're welcome right here. Move and have your way, I pray. Move and have your way. Jesus, I know you're here, and I want you tonight, I want you to touch me, For more. I ask for more. I, I hear many of your hearts saying, I wish he'd preach. Well, he's way better than anything I could tell you. This, his manifest presence, should be the point of all we say. Right? Jesus, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Father, I ask for fresh baptism in the Spirit. I ask for signs and wonders tonight. I want you to agree with me. I pray for signs and wonders tonight that would reveal Jesus and help us love Him even more. In Jesus' name. Okay. I want you to just, without, listen, without letting your heart change the channel, have a seat. And if Jesus is touching you, forget about me, okay? I'm just going to move this. This is an awesome and heavy pulpit. 
Stay close, though, Donovan. He might need a chair, too. Or a stool. Oh, Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. We have to... We have to become very comfortable here. Very comfortable here. If you're not comfortable here, you need to get comfortable here when you're all alone with Him. What I mean by here is His presence is is location. It's a... It's the kingdom of heaven manifest. Do you follow me? So on our team, if I see people getting antsy in moments like this, it tells me a lot as a leader how they're spending their time in secret. Because the secret place with the Lord, being alone with Him, only He in that place is able to teach you how to love Him. So... Well, first, let me just say, uh, Pastor John and Ann, thank you for having me. You guys are wonderful. And uh, what an amazing ministry the Lord's given you. I just pray for a hundredfold increase after this week. Hundredfold on every front. And I look forward to getting to know you guys more and loving Jesus together. Yeah. I don't have a sermon title. I used to. And now I have one sermon. Jesus Jesus is my sermon. You say, well, that's not for all of us. Maybe if we all preach Jesus, maybe we'd win the whole world. You say, I do. I mean, I, I, I do preach Jesus. Well, maybe you do and maybe you don't. When the Holy Spirit, you're going to have to follow me now because I don't know where I'm going. So you just have to be gracious. Okay. His presence in our hearts, in our minds, we must begin seeing His presence as Him. I'm going to say that again. His presence must be seen as being Him. In our lives. As long as his presence is separate from him. As long as his presence is this ethereal feeling, though he, you can feel his presence. Though you can become very aware of his presence. How many of you are right now? And do you know why that is? The reason that that is the case is because he's here. You say, well, I know that. No, you don't. If you really knew that, your heart would be bursting over right now in love and adoration. You'd really believe that nothing's impossible. Everything would change. When, when, and you never stop learning the fact that he's there. If, if, that, if, you stop, if the wow factor ends, something's off. My wife said one time, she's watching, she said, would you please stop sharing this story? But I just have to do it, babe, so have mercy. Uh, she, she, when, I, when the Lord first touched me all over again in 2006, uh, actually it was in 07, October the 23rd, I had an encounter with God in a little Lutheran church in Westport, Connecticut. And I was pastoring here in Orange County, and I had to fly all the way to Westport, <laughs> Connecticut, in a Lutheran church to get touched. I was working in crusades, but my encounter was in a Lutheran church in Westport, Connecticut, in the woods. It probably sat two or 300 people. God decided not to touch me the way I needed to be touched in stadiums, one crowd over three million people. Isn't it amazing how the devil tricks us? How he messes with our mind? The stuff he says that the church actually bites on and creates doctrine out of it. And here's one of them. I have God wherever I am. I don't need to go anywhere. I can have revival right here. Well, here's the problem, bro. You're not having revival right there. Well, I have his, God can touch me right here, but he's not. So what if he's touching people there? Go. 
What if, how many of you heard of a guy named Smith Wigglesworth? Yeah. You know you're anointed when you can raise your wife from the dead. Yeah. Some husbands probably wouldn't even try. They would probably <laughs> relieve. <laughs> Nobody here, but I've met some. You know, the Holy Spirit was being poured out in a town called Sunderland, England. And Smith drove, or not drove, I don't even know how he got there, but he got there, and God touched him there. What if he never went? What if John G. Lake never went to Illinois to meet John Alexander Dowie? What if he thought, well, I just, I don't need that guy, he's a little weird. I've got it right here. Here's another news. I felt the Lord speaking to me before, actually at Tim's house, to talk to you about what hinders the move of God from touching your life? Culture, like in our hearts, in our gatherings, in our lives, what keeps Him from manifesting in full power and, and presence? One is the fact that we kill hungry people by telling them to remain balanced. Never giving God the right to determine balance. Do you know what God's church launch was? The upper room on the day of Pentecost. Amen. To God, that was a balanced church launch. There were no graphs. Just the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I'm glad He did it. I'm glad God touched them that way. You say, well, that was then. Well, we need it more now than then. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Do you know what the church is called into? What it was born in. And more. If you're wondering what God has called you to, there's a good chance you'll find it in the place that you first found Him. The Bible says that, that that burning bush that was the presence of the Lord spoke to Moses and said, when you deliver the people, bring them right back to this spot. So Moses was called in fire until eventually he was invited up to a mountain full of fire until his body began to be illuminated by the fire and the whole camp couldn't even look at him. So the point is this, increase is God's way. It's not even addition. It's multiplication. If the church was born in power and fire and flow and the presence of the Spirit, if it was born in that, we've got to get with the program. You say, how do we get it? Hunger. You say, I'm not hungry. Ask. You say, I don't even feel like asking. Ask God to help you feel like asking. He can even work with that. Just give Him something. Give God something. You say, man, my doctrine is perfect. I don't need that. Doctrine doesn't save. Amen. If doctrine saved, every theologian in the Ivy League who has, knows more scripture than many pastors I know, if doctrine saved alone, they know all the right doctrine, yet many of them are tools used to denounce and refute the very validity of Jesus. You don't go to heaven because you check off the right boxes. You go to heaven because you actually meet a person, a real person. He's really real. He's super, super real. He says, well, how, how do we walk in to the presence? Man, it just takes like one of you. One of you. You say, do I have to be young? Do I have to wear skinny jeans? No. You don't. You don't. Do I, I mean, man, do I have to, like, I mean, do I need a tattoo on my wrist? No. You don't need it. Do I have to sit at cool cafes? All that? No. Look, you can, you, can, you can wear, I mean, I don't care. You can still wear like baggy hammer pants if you need to. Look, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You just need to be hungry. You say, that's work. Since when is love works? So I just don't agree with that. Well, that's fine. That's fine. You know, there was a day in the church where the results determined where that guy came from. I'm going to say that again. Jesus made a statement. He said, wisdom is found in its children. That means this. If you're confused, follow the people who see results. That's what he's saying. If, you don't, if, if, if you're confused, just find the people who look like Jesus, 
who do the stuff Jesus is doing, who love to be with them, who love their wives, who love their children, those, find those people who the devil hates and follow them and do what they're doing. Those people. So look, you don't, you don't have to look a certain way. For those of you who are over 50, you're probably like, I'm sick of people saying God's only going to use the young people. You're young. Compared to Noah, you're really young. Methuselah, you're really young. You're young. You're in. Everybody's invited. Everybody's invited. Say, so why are you talking like this? Because there's someone out there whose heart is being pricked with holy fire right now. Holy fire. That's, that's what it takes. You say, I, I, I just don't want to go there. Look, I don't want to heal the sick. I don't want to cast out devils. Here's the deal with all of that. And I didn't come here to preach on casting out devils, though I do enjoy it. Do you know why? Do you know why I enjoy it? Because that means that Jesus' kingdom is manifesting. That's what he said. I told the Lord a few weeks. Oh, I feel the Lord tonight. I feel the Lord tonight. I was so tired driving here, man. Tim, where's Tim? Tim and I was driving here. I had to have a triple shot, a Cuban triple shot espresso on the way here. I was super tired. Now I feel the Lord. You know what? I told the Lord a few months ago, Lord, why aren't devils manifesting in my meetings? I know they're there. Do they like my meetings? Are they, is something going on that they're enjoying? I want King Jesus to step into the moment, you see? And the Jesus said, when they leave, you know something's happened. The kingdom of God has come. And it's time we start, it's just time we start getting back in the game. Man, God touched me when I was 12 years old. I saw my first miracle, I mean real miracle, at seven, through a Greek Orthodox priest. You say, well, they're not charismatics. We don't own the Holy Spirit. What, what is, 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 is the, are charismatics an actual, like, organization? That man walked in, his face was beaming like a light. My dad was crippled with a bone disease. And the man laid hands on my dad, and my dad shot up and started walking. Woo! Check the yeah. Check this out. At a at a funeral, at a wake. You say, I don't that's just not balanced. That's not that's not respectful. What if, wait, what, wait, what if we actually got into the presence? To find the wisdom while in the presence on how to lead people in the presence. What a, what a crafty deceiver the devil has been. To, trust me, these aren't notes, as you can tell. <laughs> what a crafty deceiver the devil has been to convince us that we can do stuff apart from Jesus. And call it godly. Yeah. You say, how can you talk like this? Well, I pastored out here. I totally know what to say. <laughs> I know what you're afraid of. Jesus is a faithful shepherd. There's nothing to be afraid of. Amen. Nothing at all. Man, maybe you're like, I, I don't want to, I just, I want the stuff, but it's just got to be like, you know, it's got to be just right. <laughs> but I mean, what if, what if Christ himself actually became the pattern of Christians? <laughs> is, that, is that a crazy concept? What if Jesus, the one in whom we live, move, have our being, the one Listen, this whole book is about him. Yeah. You know what the Bible is not about? The Bible. <laughs> you say that's heresy. It's not heresy. No. Jesus didn't give us the Bible so that we would only know the Bible. He gave us the Bible according to Jesus. He said, the scriptures speak of me. 
You don't think God was really interested in teaching Noah how to begin a yacht business. <laughs> Could it be that maybe God had something else up his sleeve? Could it be that Noah's ark is a type and pattern of Jesus himself? That he is our ark that we rest in in any judgment. That though we go through the cares and the turmoil of the world, we are safe in the ark. Do you think God, you think God was interested in teaching uh, Noah how to build a, a window in a boat? Or could that window be a prophetic sign of the fact that one day the Son of God would be pierced on the side and that dove flying out of the ark would be a, a perfect, beautiful picture of one day that the presence of the Spirit and the washing of the blood would flow from the side of Jesus himself. This thing's about Jesus. You say, change the subject. No, I won't change the subject. Because there's something about his name. If I change the subject, I'm changing the Father's subject. Jesus is the Father's sermon. Listen to me. Jesus is the Father's only sermon. The Bible says that Jesus came from the bosom of the Father. He lived there. He was literally an expression. Hebrews 1 in the Greek actually says this, that Jesus has perfectly, for you theologians, exegeted the Father. That word means to unravel, to unfold. For those who love to study the Scriptures, God's sermon is this. This is my son. You say anything more? No? Because you can't have more than everything. You say, I need more. You won't find it because it all lives in him. You say, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm a presence guy. Well, make sure it's the presence of Jesus. You say, no, 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 no. I'm a word of faith guy. I'm a word of faith guy. It's all about him. You say, I'm a glory guy. If it's a glory outside of the face of Jesus, according to 2 Corinthians 4, 6, the Bible says that the glory of God is found in the face of Jesus Christ. You say, no, I'm an evangelist. Well, what are you talking about then? When you're leading people to the Lord, tell them about the Lord. He has a name. You say, I'm in deliverance ministry. Man, the deliverer starts clothing you. You'll cast more devils out without trying than you ever did trying. I've seen it. I've showed up to hotel rooms in foreign nations and gone into my room and devils manifest in the room. Do you know what? You want to know something? That, that happened to me in Guatemala. My first trip down there. I was invited down by the, the wife of the Secretary of State to preach. And I got there and a devil manifested and pinned me to the, to the bed by my back. Back then, it, it, it would still freak me out today, I'm not going to lie, but back then... It, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But I learned something about them. When they manifest like that and try to get loud, it's because they know they're on their way out. You know, when you're really ticked and afraid, when you feel powerless, what do we do? We make threats and scream and get loud. You know, when your husband doesn't talk to you and he will not talk to you, what do you start doing? <laughs> you start threatening him. If you don't talk to me, you will see. I will not talk to uh, And threat. That's what the devil does. This whole thing's about Jesus, man. The whole thing. The whole, what, what, if, what if when you were leading people to Jesus, you just talked about him? What, what if the main central issue wasn't just about heaven and hell, though both are real, very real? On our best day, on our best day, we can't save anyone. What is my job? To show them Jesus. You say, what else? Nothing. That's what the Holy Spirit told me just a few days ago. You can't have more than everything. You can't have more than everything. He's enough. I said, Jesus is enough. He's enough. This is a first love revival. That's what God's doing in the earth. There's this bridal awakening. Like radical people. Who would rather be with him than be famous? Yeah. <laughs> Man, oh, if I could only meet this guy. I'd be, no, no, if you met that guy, it wouldn't change your life. It would, I mean, if you honored them, but it wouldn't fulfill your soul. 
If I could only preach on that kind of platform, if my social media grew, no, no, none of that. It wouldn't, you wouldn't wake up with a smile on your face. And if you did, your heart wouldn't be smiling. Only his presence is the bread of life. You know, God doesn't visit carpet so much. Though I have seen the glory of God so intensify over prolonged periods of time that when you crossed onto certain properties and actually came into the property, you, you like it was saturated. It had been renewed. The land had been healed. I visited charismatic evangelical nuns in Phoenix who have become some of my best friends. And yeah, isn't that wild? They're some of my best friends. And when you walk on the land, it's like it's holy ground. So that is possible. But it doesn't start there. It starts with someone who's crazy and wild and committed enough to, to figure something out. God doesn't visit our curiosity. Are you hearing me? Can I come down or is will it? Okay. Sorry. God is not obligated to visit curiosity. And the visitation is just step one. So he's certainly not bound to inhabit curiosity. He visits and inhabits the diligent. That is not law. That is not works. You can go, you can go to heaven. And never seek Jesus, but make no bones about it. Check this out. God has favorites. No, 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 no. He's not a respecter of persons. I didn't say that. I just, I'm just saying this. He is closer to some people than others. You're like, no, that's not the Jesus I know. We've got to read the Bible. And all of you know right here, all of you know this, that if... Something really went wrong in your life, you've got about three to five people you'd call, right? You know who's at the top of the list? The ones who seem to have a good connection. Right? The ones who God listens to. The ones who have a way to move his hand. Miss, uh, Miss Kuhlman, Catherine Kuhlman, my friend was eating lunch with her. And obviously, she really impacted our family. My father-in-law, she's my favorite preacher ever. And we need more people like her. More people comfortable in the presence who can preach from the platform of his glory. Who, who are dependent upon him. More dependent upon his presence than what they have to say. Because they realize something. When his presence is manifest, every word becomes like a fiery, golden, holy brick that crushes the hearts of men. It's undeniable when you become a friend of God. And he was there eating lunch with, with, with Catherine, and there was a host pastor praying. And the pastor prayed for like 10 minutes over the food. And Catherine, just like Catherine would, she looked up, she just said this, he must have a bad connection. That's what she said. He must have a bad connection. There are some people whose heartbeat moves the hand of God. I'm going to say that again. There are some people whose very heartbeat gets God to move. There are some people whose desire alone, before they even express it, God begins to meet the need. You say, does he do that for everyone? No. Does he want to? Yes. Whose fault is it? My, I had to say this one time to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm not seeing what happened in the Holy Word of God happen in my life. Only two things could be a possibility here. It's either your fault or mine. Something tells me it can't be yours. And I came to the place in my life where I said, I'm coming. Jesus, I'm coming. How am I going to come? I don't know. Does it require a fast? Maybe I'll do it. Do I have to go to a meeting? I'll do it. Do I have to drive 10 hours to go where God is moving? I don't, I'll do it. Do I have to read scriptures, read a book, somebody have to pray for? What do I have to do? I'm going to do it. You say, yeah, that's, that, that's what happens. Because at some point in you, this holy tension, listen to me now, this holy tension begins to take you over. And this is a tension 
This is a tension. It's right here. It's what Paul said. I want to apprehend that which apprehended me. I want to take hold of the one who knocked me off my horse and saved me when I was persecuting him. That's what the Bible says. Why are you persecuting me? Yet the love of God came and knocked me off my horse on my way to murder his bride. What love is this? I've got to have it. I've got to have him. Who is this one who came to visit? You, listen, look me in the eye. You can have as much of Jesus as you want. You say, do this stuff, work some miracles. Look, if I worked miracles and didn't give you this, I would just be teaching you how to be God's employee. How to work the realm of faith, which is very easy. You don't even have to be born again to do it, though I value it. Judas raised more dead people than anybody here. The Bible calls Balaam a sorcerer and a prophet in the same chapter. Man, what you're getting tonight, not because it comes from me, it's the heart of God. You know what the Bible says? That God took Enoch and Enoch was no more. You know what that word take means? It's the Hebrew word for taking and marriage. Not escaping. It was God saying, this man walks with me like nobody else. And because he does, I'm going to marry him a few thousand years early. Get up here, I take you. You say, no way. That's what happened to David in Psalm 22. God began to show him what would happen on the cross through encounter. David tapped in to the beauty of the new covenant by seeing it. Why? Because he was a man after God's heart. I don't want to be normal. You say, you're not, bro. I want to be less normal than I am right now. Normal sounds boring. Man, come on. Come on, do you get, do you understand what's available? We don't have the right to say no to sick people. When did this even become a, a, it's not our stripes. We didn't pay the bill. We don't have the right to go, no, mom, with stage four cancer. You don't fit today's schedule. You need to go home and suffer for a few more months until we have a meeting that suits you. See, God has to chip away at this thing. Just looking for people, man. And you know what? Like, 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 he's, can I just talk to you from my heart? He's looking for people who are always listening, who are wanting him, not because, so they can do more of the stuff. They're, they're listening because they understand his voice is food. And if he turns his voice off, like David said, if thou be a silent unto me, it's like I go down into the pit. He said, when you're quiet, it's like hell. But your voice is food. And that's what Jesus said. My words are spirit. And they are life. So he begins talking to you at Walmart, and talking to you at Target, talking to you at Starbucks. Hey, go lay hands on that guy. And all of a sudden, you're doing it for the right reason. Yeah. Not to post it. Come on. Some of my best friends in the world are using that, so I think it's amazing. Todd White's probably one of my top three best friends in the world. God's called him that. I'm just saying this. Todd leads, I'm with him all the time, almost every month. There are more people led to Jesus, like 20 times more off camera. The point is this, it becomes genuine when it's about marrying the Lord, when it's about understanding that we are married to him. This is a first love issue. So you can walk by someone and give them 20 bucks, whether you post it or not, or whether your friend sees it or not. This is like a really high plateau where God starts challenging the motives of our hearts and throwing them into this holy, fiery furnace, and it's purified. And you know what that does? This is what it does. It breeds eternal fruit, eternal reward, not wood, hay, and stubble, but silver, gold, precious stones, because it's birthed by Jesus. It's done for the right reasons. Do you know if Reinhard Bunke led 73 million people to Jesus by now in the last 15 years? If he, if he led those 73 million with the wrong motive, they'd all be saved, but Reinhard wouldn't receive any of the reward and glory. That's what Paul wrote. That everything we do passes through this holy fire and only gold remains. What's the gold? What's birthed by him. What's done for him. This is the place, man. You say, will that turn the miracles off? No. That's where you'll become so saturated, so overwhelmed, out of friendship for the Lord. Listen, why did Peter's shadow heal the sick? I've heard many interpretations, but the most childlike, which is typically the most Jesus-like. The most childlike is this. God liked hanging out with Peter. We all love Jesus' presence, but there's a place 
in such friendship, forged in private, yielded to in public, where Jesus starts enjoying your presence. How is it that the Lord performed more miracle signs and wonders than the earth has room to contain the books? That's a big bookshelf. The Pacific Ocean is a big bookshelf. Africa, big library. There's not enough room on earth to hold the books. How do you do that? Can you do it through the laying on of hands alone? No. Of course not. The Bible says wherever he went, virtue flowed out of him, and as many as touched him were made whole. How does that happen? It happens because he was distracted by the eyes of the Father. And by default, God says, oh, this is my faithful son who always lays his life down. He's my beloved son. And glory and power is flooding through him. Man, there is a place in God where you walk into Target during flu season. And you open, listen, you open the door. And the next hundred people who come through and touch that door are all healed and don't know why. And they'll never, they'll, they won't even know your name. And who gives a rip if they ever know your name? But they won't know your name. Yet all are getting healed. They don't know. The Lord goes, that one's accredited to their account. That's gold that passes through. Holy fire. That, that's a crown. That's a jewel. That one will make it. I'm telling you. I've seen it. I've been with people who walk this kind of level of intimacy. Growing up with my father-in-law, he could sing Old MacDonald, and there would be like 10,000 miracles. And here I was giving my all and with all these outlines, and nothing was happening. And he'd go, oh, Mikey, you just need to meet him. I did meet him. I went to an altar. No! No, there's more. There's more in Jesus. Walk with him. Let him distract you. Let him be yours. Let him be your vision. Let him be your sermon. Let him be everything. All of a sudden, you talk about him, and he comes. Well, of course he comes when we talk about him. He's real. He's not a subject. He's real. Real. Jesus is real. He's real. That's what the Bible says, right? That's what the Bible says. Has he who formed the eye, can he not see you? Has he who planted the ear, can he not hear you? Jesus said, if two or three gather in my name, I would be there. Even, even that means it gets better. Even in the midst of them. That means, guys, the sound booth, you're awesome. But he's not only just like hanging out in the back. He's not content with that. If we gather in his name. So if you gather in the name of Michael, there's no promise. If you gather in the name of an event, no promise. You gather in the name of your church, no promise that he's there. You say, well, I, I, of course he's there. It's church. No, those are just buildings. Those are just buildings with crosses on top, and I'm, I thank God for all he's doing in all of them. But what makes church church is the one who bought the church. Thank you, Lord. If it's not, it's just like a big Kiwanis club. If you remember the Kiwanis club, I love you. But you know what I'm saying? What's the determining factor? They that gather in my name. You have to be more aware of him than anything. And if you are, if you walk through those doors every Sunday and go, Jesus is here. Man, you better hold on. You better hold on. Because he's not blind. Listen to me. He's not blind. And he's not deaf. And he's not lazy. He who formed the eye, he sees you. And if Jesus sees you, he does something. He hears you. He planted the ear. Does he not hear? He hears the cry of your heart. And he hears your prayer. Jesus hears the prayer. He does something. It's not lazy. Look at his resume. <laughs> Even after he says it's finished, like I said earlier, he plunges the depths of hell and embarrasses the devil. After all of that, he sits down in Acts 1 and has a Bible study with the disciples by the Spirit, by the way, the Bible says. Even Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Bible says, by the Spirit, he began to show them. What? The Scriptures and everything concerning himself. Jesus is like that. If your life becomes aware of him, well, guess what's going to happen? He's coming along. He's looking for friends. That's what he's looking for, friends. I like you. I like you. I 
I was in Boston preaching. How many of you ever met about a 60-year-old Puerto Rican woman? Have you ever met one? <laughs> if you're from the East Coast, you have. They're kind of like 60-year-old Greek women that I've met. So we had a healing line and... Help me, Donovan, real, real soft. Uh, we had a healing line and I kept passing her. I don't know why I was passing her. I just knew I was supposed to pass her. It's really weird. So I was praying for people. Some were getting healed, some weren't. But I just kept going. How many of you know, I mean, we don't have to bat a thousand. We want to, but if you're not, just go. Yeah. You say, man, what if I throw a bad pitch? Man, Jesus can hit any pitch you throw. Yeah. Just throw the pitch. Throw the pitch. What if I get it wrong? Try it again. People say, bro, bro what do I do? If I fall asleep while I'm seeking the Lord, I go, you just wake up and do it again. <laughs> You're sleeping anyway. Just do it again. So I was passing this lady. She started getting mad at me. A little Puerto Rican fireball. She's pacing, getting mad at me. I passed her again. She got more mad. Because I don't work for her. No, 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 no. It's very important. Just because you love people doesn't mean you work for people. And you really love the people when you really yield to Jesus. Because in God's economy, love is not just a feeling. It's getting her free. And I have no ability to get her free outside of him. So I'm, I'm, I'm there walking and she grabs my assistant. This guy, he was assisting me then. Now he's an amazing preacher named Eric Gilmore. He was just coming up to serve and lead worship. She grabs Eric and gets like mad at him. And the next time I pass her, her, her neck, she had been in a car wreck. She had a brace on. The next time I passed her, her neck snapped back in place and God healed her. Without prayer. Why? Because I was more aware of Jesus than her. So God just healed her. That, that's available for all of us. Yeah. That's available. If it's not real, then what are we doing? If, if what I'm talking about is not real, then he's not real. And if he's not real, we're in big trouble. Say, I, I, I don't believe in all that stuff. I, that's all done. He's changed his mind. What if he changes his mind on, regarding your salvation? I have never met anyone who went after him and didn't find him. It takes a different amount of time for everybody, but I, I've never met anybody who didn't quit and did not receive their experience with the Lord. You say, why is that important? <laughs> God does not call the super equipped and seasoned. He calls the desperate and equips those who know they need him. The weak. I don't mean physically weak or depressed or not knowing your identity. I mean the people who have finally discovered that they need him. This is that kind of heart who says, I'm coming and I'm not quitting because you gave me a promise if I seek you with all my heart, I will find you. Now check this out. I have three minutes. Listen. No, that's good. Check this out. You don't inherit encounter. It's not a blood transact, it's like a human family bloodline type deal. You don't, your mama's Jesus has to become your Jesus. That's right. That's right. Is that a your mom, your mama joke? <laughs> 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 
So, in my case, Pastor Benny's my father-in-law. Is he a little different? Oh, yeah, super different guy. I get it. But I, I was healed in his meeting in 1989 of an incurable disease, totally healed, completely healed, called out of a crowd of 3,000 people. Was his hair parted to the side? Yeah, straight to the side. Did he have a weird suit on? Yeah. Did I like the way he talked? No. Did I give a rip when the power of God shot through me? No. Wait, wait, hey, can I crack away at this thing? Since when does God get our approval to call somebody? You say they're weird. Jesus spit on a man's tongue. Is that weird enough? Do you know God's not interested in how dignified you look when he touches you? He's just looking for some hungry people. In the midst of all that, his Jesus had to become my Jesus. Why are you telling me stories all night, Michael? To provoke you. I say, well, where do I find him? Right here. Right, right now. You say, I feel him. Good. Give way to it. Give in. Close your eyes right now. Just, 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 just give in. Pick that key up, Donovan. Just give in. So Jesus said to the woman at the well that those that drink would experience a well that would bubble over a spring. You see, the spring doesn't flow until you have a drink. To get daily teaching from Michael and to follow our event schedule around the world, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to subscribe to the Jesus Image TV YouTube channel as well. By partnering with Jesus Image, you will help us take the saving and healing power of Jesus to the world. Your giving changes lives forever. For more information, please visit us online at JesusImage.tv or write us at Jesus Image, P.O. Box 950-640, Lake Mary, Florida 32795. Thank you for your prayers and financial support. Jesus is the answer for every life, everywhere.